Man, we live at Hyro headquarters. I'm here with the financial master, <laughs> or one of the financial masters behind the Hyro brand. As y'all can see, we got the kicks. We got the building. Y'all know Hot 93 Till Infinity. Y'all know Souls of Mischief. Y'all know Hyro Day. And it's a lot y'all don't know. But we got none other than Tajay Massey, man. Thank you for coming on, bro. Peace. Thank right you. On. So this has been my brother for a lot of years. This has been um, somebody I also watched his movement. Man, first question, man. How did you go from being a rap legend going back to school and wanting to be an architect. I mean, you got off tour and you didn't met everybody that the hip hop would want to meet. And now you was like, I'm about to go to UC Berkeley and be an architect. What, what made you do that? And what, when did you do that? So I went between 2010 and 2014 um, for, for grad school. And part of it was, uh, you know, I went to undergrad at Stanford, man. My mom, you know, all my rap money, they forced me to go, not forced me. They was like, yo, you're not spending this money on chains and stuff. You got to go to school. So I spent most of my early rap money on undergrad. And so what's the point in having a degree if I'm not using it, kind of. Um, but really, man, uh, what really made the change was a few things. One, uh, I started doing, like you said, I was touring with everybody. And I started realizing, like, and this was, you know, I'm still in my early 30s at this point. Um, I'm the oldest dude in this room, you know, so we'll rock a show and everything and I'll be like, damn, I'm older than everybody here, you know, and I, I was still relatively young at that time. But so I started to realize like there's got to be more to it than this. And I was touring with a lot of uh, old school acts and stuff and seeing like they still on that circuit and the circuit is a tough grind, you know, and I got kids and all this kind of stuff. So I don't want to be on tour 300 days a year just to have a certain lifestyle because if I'm not there to enjoy the fruits of the lifestyle, then what's the point, you know? Like, I'm not trying to be an absentee father. I'm not trying to be, um, you know, laying down the law from, from Paris and shit. I'm trying to be in Oakland, speaking to my kids, picking them up from school, taking them to soccer, taking them to jujitsu and all that kind of stuff. So there was that, and I was seeing that a lot of old school cats had to still chase that bread, you know? Uh, and they probably had grown kids, you know? So that, um, I saw this movie called The Wrestler, with Mickey seen, Rourke. I seen that one. Oh man, it's a good movie, but it's about an aging wrestler. You know, who's who? He's past his prime. You know, he's he's using pain meds to you know keep himself together and all that. And I just started thinking about my mortality and my my um my what I have to offer to the world. And I felt like I wasn't living up to my full potential. And a, a, as a result, I said, hey, you know, I'm gonna go back to school. And I, I mean, the the question I asked in my head was, if I was a billionaire, what would I do? Because I already didn't live my dream as a rapper. And, travel the world and all that and I was like well I'd probably be a, a designer or architect you know so I said well I don't got a billion but I, I got the opportunity to do that and I went back to I applied uh, in fact the night that I was at one of these shows realizing I was the oldest dude I had a really nice camera on me and I went I left the party it was cracking I think we were in Switzerland or Sweden or something like that it was cracking but it was at this famous museum and they had a lot of nice architecture out there and I went out and started taking pictures mm -hmm. in, the, in the night and messing with the shadows and, and all that kind of stuff. And that ended up being part of my portfolio to go to grad school. And that was maybe in 2008 or nine. And then I started grad school in 2010. I finished in 2014. I had a kid during the time, so I took a year off. And man, I've been working as a designer ever since, man. I worked for a black firm over in uh, Emeryville. I worked for two firms, Bowline and Associates and Sabi Design Build, uh, both owned by two different Jamaican brothers out there. And, um, do a lot of work here, man. We do restaurants. We did a Kingston Eleven, uh, Aunt Mary's Cafe. Um, I did the cupcake and all the cupcake and shops, including the new one in Swans. Um, do housing. I do a lot of housing over in West Oakland. Uh, so I what do you do? You do the blueprint? Yeah. So so, I, so so basically, I'm an architectural designer. Until I get licensed, I can't call myself an architect. So I've got about seven tests to take, which uh, you know I got to take the time off to study for those. But um, yeah, I draw the, you go consult, you find a lot, you consult with the uh, owner of the lot and you basically draw whatever they want built there. And then you draw it and bring it to contractors, contractors bid. And then when they, they pick a bid, the, the contractors build whatever. So I basically just do the drawing. I mean, I do some construction on my own for my own projects, but for the most part, I just draw what people want, you know? Um, yeah, and I, I think it's coming to the point where I was kind of specializing in restaurants and, um, single family homes, you know, so houses and restaurants. But I, I have done like multi-stories and recently because of the, the need for a lot of these cannabis companies to become into compliance 
for the state. Mm -hmm. I've been doing a lot of um, cannabis production facilities, distribution facilities, and things like that. So how how do you look at the Hyrule brand? I mean, you guys have shoes, you bring in architecture. I don't know if that's part of the Hyrule brand oh, yeah. or if that's something separate, yeah. but you had jeans, you have Hyro Day, which is the biggest hip hop holiday in California that I know that is ran by a hip hop artist. Mm. I mean, how do you conceptualize? I mean, a lot of people see themselves as musicians. How do you see yourself where you see all these different opportunities? Ooh, I, I guess you are only limited to the scope of your imagination. You know, like, uh, I, I feel like I grew up without, we were talking about this earlier, I grew up really without television. You know, like we used to have to entertain my mom, like stand on the fireplace and do plays and stuff like that and entertain each other. So I feel like I have a pretty developed imagination and, and all my homies, we grew up on the same block. So we all kind of, we went outside. We weren't inside kids, you know, until really home computers came out. Damn, I sound like an old man. <laughs> Anyways, you know, but until home computing was really a thing, we, we kind of, um, it was all about you're using your imagination. So you're only limited to the extent of your imagination. And then all the things we do are stuff that we want to see in the world. You know, like, oh, it'd be fly to have some Hyro kicks. Okay, what was the dopest kicks? What Air Mac, you know what I'm saying? Or we also, we're from the Bay, man. We're from Too Short, uh, Jello Biafra, Master P, uh, E40. So it's like, man, we're not about to go let somebody else do our thing. We do our thing. So we really just decided to put our resources behind ourselves. I mean, we're in East Oakland right now. I've been here my whole life. We, we invested here, we bought a building here, we put on events here, um, we do mentorship and all that kind of stuff here, et cetera. So it's really about looking at what you can do and expanding on it, making it exist in the world, and then also um, looking at what you can't do and seeing how we make it that possible. But you're only limited to the extent of your imagination. In, in life, in anything, man, everything we see except for a lot of the natural phenomenon, which the ultimate architect, you know, whatever you believe in created. Everything else we see is, is human made, you know? So men and women sat down and said, you know what? I want to see this. I need something to take me up faster than stairs. Or I need something to take me up stairs. You know what I mean? So it, it, don't limit yourself by what you see in the world. If people only made what they've seen in the world, we'd be in a boring place. People make stuff that they haven't seen. That's invention, right, and creation. So. That, that's, that's kind of the, the feeling we use and we just tap into the, the, the third eye vision and really, you know, get, get spiritual with it and, and, and um, just use our mind power, man. I think that people are under this illusion like that technology has power or money has power. Nah, power it precedes all that. You know, you don't get power at, like, well, they're talking about money, power, respect. It don't go in that order. It starts with power, you know, for like, like quick and them say, first you get the power, then you get all that other stuff, you know? So, mm. The greatest power is inside of you, you know, or flowing through you, depending on how you look at it. And you just got to tap into that power. So it's, it's really about imagination and then knowing that what you have in your head can exist in the world and then figuring out the how. And the how a lot of people get stu stuck on, but the how is just some steps. It's like a recipe, right? I mean, you want a souffle, you got to get the ingredients and whip it up, right? It's the same with anything in the world, you know? So I think, um, with the, the, the internet and with all these tools we have at our hands, the how should be pretty easy, you know, and it shouldn't be limited by money. It shouldn't be limited by access, none of that. You gotta figure out how. And once you do that, it's, it's, it's done, you know, then it's execution.